Coming into this election, uh, the markets uh, felt that uh, the, the centre-left would have performed much better and the chances of forming at least a coalition strong enough to be able to um, keep to the principle um, of the EU in terms of keeping the pressure on costs um, would have won the order of the day. Um, what we found is the surprise swing vote um, suggests that the, the, the voters have voted very much against austerity, um, very much against what is taking place within Italy in terms of its government. Um, so we have a surprise hung parliament and one which looks very difficult to try and resolve over the course of the next few weeks um, in terms of a, a government that can prove to be stable going forward. Well, as we've entered into different stages of this European crisis, it started obviously with the banks and then moved to the sovereign market. And at each stage, governments have moved to try and deal with those um, particular issues. Um, but what this, this election is proving to us is that the markets are now moving towards a further stage, um, and that this is political instability. We've had very long periods now of economic tough conditions, recessions, and keeping really the foot on the neck of austerity. And what we're now starting to see is that voters are starting to vote against that. Um, they want something different. They want growth. They want stimulus. They want money coming into the system. And I think the surprise feature of the Italian election is, is how far um, they've moved the vote to that type of, type of offering. Um, now, is this going to herald a new period of instability for Europe? We don't know, um, but we do need to, to respect the fact that uh, this, this, this vote could translate further throughout Europe. Obviously, we have elections coming forward in Germany later this year. And as each stage you try to deal with the problems, the problems become bigger and bigger, and political instability um, is going to become a very tough issue for the EU to deal with should we start to get um, governments coming in um, with leaders with completely different agendas to that of the EU. I think it's generally accepted that the current framework in how the EU was put together is too restrictive. What we've learnt over the course of the last decade is that uh, moving towards a common currency has certainly benefited some countries enormously and it's hurt other countries enormously. And the process that we're going through at the moment is a period of competitive readjustment, um, which is hurting particularly southern European countries very hard indeed, um, in order to try and sort of maintain the discipline to keep the structure together. Now what political instability does is it starts to seriously question whether the EU is, is right in the way that it is going forward, um, and trying to keep everybody together in a structure that is patently wrongly designed in the first place. And the only cover-up that is uh, allowing this all to, to, to continue is just trillions of euros of central bank support uh, in order to, to keep markets stabilised while this adjustment takes place. But if we find that we enter into a phase where different countries have different agendas, it looks just increasingly likely or unlikely that um, that, that uh, stability and that union can continue in the current form.